So we're here with we're we're here with we're here with JB. You know, have a seat. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, come on, we can, this, this is this is how we do it. This is how we do it. James Brown, JB, the man. I'm just gonna hand him a football. I'm Steven. Steven, good So nice to meet you. So. I should have uh, shown some TV etiquette. No, like whispered a little no, bit, you know. No, no, no. This is, it's anything goes. This is it's anything goes. Here. Well, that's yeah. good to Live know. Live internet, you know, we could do whatever we want. We could say whatever we want. Mm -hmm. So it's a thrill for me to meet you because I have been watching you for years. For years on <laughs> Sunday, I'm only Take it easy so. on the compliments, hey, Steve. Hey, hey, no, 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 it's true. Because I'm a huge Steeler fan. Because I'm from Pittsburgh, so and the Steelers are always on CBS. So you know what? And early on, folks were concerned about how they would play minus Ben Roethlisberger. They went what three and one. Three and one. That's right. Uh, this is probably a little controversial. James Harrison. I really hope that they don't radically change his game with what I understand the safety concerns. Right. I really do. But last week they hit on the quarterback. I mean, I thought that was legitimate. Um, that's what they've got to find a happy do do there. do they know what they're what they're finding what they're doing? It's weird to me because, you know, it seems like week to week it's now it's James is falling on uh, the quarterback with his full body weight, or now it's his he led with his head into a guy's chest. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily a helmet to helmet contact. Every week it seems different. You know, yeah. do you think they need an across the board sort of standard? Which is really pretty tough in a game like football. It, it is a tough game. It's a, it's a game that, that happens instantaneously. And again, I'm not trying to sound like I'm giving a politically correct answer. Right. I understand where the league is coming from vis-a-vis uh, -vis the commissioner in terms of trying to make certain that, that, that safety is the number one concern. Mm. I get that. But some of the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact is incidental. Uh, to the degree that you can see something that's blatant where there is the intention to hurt, I get that. Right. You want to legislate against that. But the incidental stuff or just a hard physical tackle and you would hope that the referees aren't making calls based on the aggressiveness and the the level of contact as opposed to that which is egregiously offensive right now at one point that's that i talk about this a lot with people because mm -hmm. people in pittsburgh are up in arms about mm -hmm. one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in fines that james harrison has accumulated this year wow. now he makes millions of dollars so i don't necessarily feel bad for him but, but for those who don't make that kind of money there needs to be a fairness standard there because for someone making three or four hundred thousand dollars, one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars—that's a significant sure, chunk out of their sure, paycheck. Yeah, so sure. there'll be some type of sliding scale, I think, which makes sense. But one of the best points that was brought up to me was: Did the NFL create this problem itself when they made pass interference such a touchy foul? You can't even—you you, you almost can't even touch the guy. You can't touch a receiver. So now teams are sitting back in zone waiting for somebody to catch the ball and then they're just going to you know try to light him up when he's coming across the middle did the NFL create this problem when they when they made pass interference such a tough penalty no you know what i think when players run across the middle it has been an, an ongoing understanding that if you come across the middle you're going to pay the price oh, yeah. no matter what absolutely no doubt about that Lonnie for sure um, the pass interference uh, the 5 yards within 5 yards mm -hmm. you can be physical uh, but after that, I think, without a doubt, it was designed to ensure offensive scoring. Fans like to see offense, right. so you want to see prolific scoring. The better athletes are on the defensive side of the ball. And if you look over the past 10, 15 years, most of the rules that have been implemented have been against the defense. Yeah. And at some point, you've got to even it out a little bit because it makes it awfully tough on those guys. You hear football players say, wait a minute. They pay those defensive players to earn. Offensive players, they're earning as well, too. Make them earn their keep. I think it's getting a little too touchy as far as quarterbacks are concerned. I understand it's a quarterback-driven league. I get that. But where can you tackle a quarterback? Right. And most of the old-school guys, Dan Marino, with whom I work in the studio, Boomer Esiason, these guys even feel that it's getting to be a little too touchy-feely as far as protecting the quarterbacks. And this is going to be my 100% Pittsburgh Steeler bias it's coming through right now. But a few weeks ago, Pittsburgh-Oakland, Richard Seymour got in a little – incident mm. with Ben, kind of mm. punch him in the face. Ben Knox gets knocked over. Richard Seymour was, I believe, fined 25000 or something, was. but was not suspended. He was kicked out of the game. A lot of people are saying if that's Peyton Manning or if that's Tom Brady, one of the big marquee names in the NFL, that Seymour is, is suspended. If it's, it's Roethlisberger, he's not necessarily one of the top two. Or Drew Brees. A lot of people are saying, you know, the, the rules are different for different people. That is the general feeling, and I won't argue against that. It, it is a hypothetical, so I won't put myself in a position to say that it definitely would have occurred, but make no mistake about it, those two guys, Manning, Brady, they are protected for sure. Richard Seymour is not known as a dirty football player. Uh, I think Mike Tomlin 
really said it best the first yeah. time that he's not going to let that affect his attitude or his uh, his thinking about Richard Seymour because he really is a tough nosed player. Totally. We believe that Seymour thought it was another uh, uh, offensive lineman that did that. Seymour is a very strong oh, yeah. man, and I mean that wasn't one of those closed fist punches. He hit like that and can do some exactly. damage. For can sure. do some damage, sure. yeah. And just this week, also, Heinz Ward, Steelers wide receiver, came out and said, "Oh, the league's cracking down on these hard hits. They want to protect us." And mm -hmm. I agree with that. You know, these guys risk their mm -hmm. lives and you know Absolutely. can get a concussion. Absolutely. But he goes, "How does that make sense when they want to increase the season to 18 games? Now we've got to play two more games throughout the year." He thinks it's just you know, I think it's about money. You know. Well, you know what? And money is driving a sure. lot of this. Make no mistake about it. Um, Steve, I really hope that there can be, and I'm overworking this expression, a happy medium yeah. there. 18 games is a long season. If you're looking at the number of injuries, Phil Simms, with whom I work on Inside the NFL on Showtime, said that he got a chance to watch for the first time in a long time because he was off this past Sunday. He used the word epidemic in describing the kind and number of injuries that you're seeing in the NFL. If this is happening in a 16-game regular season over 17 weeks, right. what's going to happen 18 games? We know that it is a quarterback-driven league. You're going to have to add another couple of players or more to the roster Absolutely. just because of attrition during the course of the regular season as well. So there are a lot of things to take into account. There should be some comprehensive changes as well to OTAs, the optional training, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, optional team activity. They've got to reduce that because the human body can only handle so much. That game is played by some very tough, hard-hitting men. And I have the ultimate respect. Anybody that steps across those white lines to play, they are serious out there. And the body can only handle so much. Now, JB, we got a question from our chat room okay. here from one of our from one of our viewers. A couple of questions. Cool Jets wants to know how tall are you? Ah, we're kept on small chairs on the set, so everybody <laughs> looks to be about the same height. Uh, I'm about uh, six four and a half, six five. I'm glad the question was how tall are you as opposed to how much do you weigh because back in the day when I played basketball, which was really my sport, uh, I knocked in at about 210 pounds. Right now, I'm knocking in at about 200 pounds. You know? so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that's a good question because yeah. I saw James for the first time in person yesterday, and I went, holy. I called my friend. I said, right. I just saw James Brown. He's giant. He's so big. I said, I didn't realize you were that tall. And the other guys on the set as well, too. Dan Marino's about 6'4". Um, Boomer Sison is about 6'4", almost 6'5". So there's some pretty pretty big guys that I work with. Danny Marino, Pittsburgh oh. boy. Gotta love him. Central Catholic. I had a lot of friends who went to Central. Arguably the best, most talented quarterback to ever play the game. Still gets people who genuflect when they see him because the man could play. Tell him, tell him I said hello. Now we got another, we got another one, right, Ricky? Yeah. Um, when will we see a college football playoff? Mm. I don't know about it. Yeah, you know what, Steve, I don't know about it either. I think the system right now is so entrenched. There's so much money associated with the bowl games. It's going to be awfully tough to switch to a playoff season, which, by the way, makes all the best sense in the world to determine right. who the best is in college football. Make no mistake about it. You cannot refute the logic of a playoff system. Oh, but having said that, it's not going to happen anytime soon. A lot of people say – you know, get the 11 top conference winners mm -hmm. and then get five at-large teams, make mm -hmm. a 16-team playoff. Mm -hmm. And what would be – it will be four weeks. And talk about how exciting that would be. That would be just – It would be. But then the argument that you hear a lot of college administrators uh, purport and put forth is, well, wait a minute, we got to be concerned about them being student athletes and the amount of time out of school. Please, I mean, give me a break. Right, I mean, it's, right. it's, it's challenging enough. Even with some of the rules that have been – uh, implemented now with a 20-hour work week and the whole nine yards. Look, they can still have a playoff system. I think will make the most sense, but the bowl system certainly keeps a lot of schools involved, and there is a lot of money involved that benefits a lot of conferences. Right. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about the NFC. Um, mm -hmm. The Eagles beat the Texans on Thursday night in a pretty you know, highly contested game. Michael Vick carrying the team really right now, but he got banged up um, in that game. Do you think, you know, even with a banged up Michael Vick, are, are, are the Eagles a team to beat in the NFC right now? They are one of the teams uh, to beat in the NFC. Certainly you have to give the Atlanta Falcons their due credit, but let me spend just a second on the Eagles. They have been surprising. They've got track stars who play there uh, with McLean and Deshaun Jackson and Michael Vick. I mean, they are a fast team getting it done. Um, Michael Vick is playing lights-out football. Um, really happy to see what he's doing on the field 
and off the field. I know that's certainly generated an awful lot of conversation as well. The Atlanta Falcons, Matty Ice, Matty Ryan, their quarterback, 19-1 and at home, including 15 straight wins there. They are tough. Michael Turner, the running back, Roddy White, wide receivers, Gonzalez. They've got a very tough squad, and we haven't talked enough about their head coach, Mike Smith, who deserves an awful lot of credit for what he's done with that squad. Um, New York Giants certainly can figure in the mix. They've been a little up and down, but I would not vote against the defending Super Bowl champions. John Madden, the icon in football, taught me a long time ago. He would always say, until the defending champion is dethroned, right. They are still the team to beat. They haven't been scintillating, but they're still getting it done, and they're starting to peak at the right time right. of the season. Because the team that's hot at the end of the year, of course, is usually a lot of teams. A lot of times, the team that wins the Super Bowl, and that's that's the big thing. Mm -hmm. Have a run going into going into the playoffs. Now this weekend, Sunday, mm -hmm. huge matchups. We got Jets, Patriots, mm -hmm. and we've got Ravens, Steelers, which mm -hmm. I haven't been able to stop thinking about mm -hmm. all week. Now, are these games a playoff preview? I mean, can th this really could set the stage for the playoffs this week. We could really find out a lot about the, the seeds in the AFC. And isn't it nice to see these kinds of meaningful games coming up at this time of the season? Uh, gosh, when you think about Pittsburgh and Ben Roethlisberger, you know, is his foot broken? We know he's certainly injured. The Baltimore Ravens are not the kind of team that you'd want to be playing if you've got an injury because you think, well, hey, if they're trying to determine where to hit the quarterback along his body, they're going to be going at his yeah, feet this absolutely. time. Make, make no mistake about that. But Pittsburgh is a tough squad, um, and they've been in tough battles. They've got some seasoned players who know what it's all about. Heinz Ward, who is as tough an athlete on the offensive side of the ball as you'll find, sets the tone there attitudinally. Defensively, they've got so many very talented players there. That's going to be one very hard-hitting game. Jets and Patriots. The Patriots, in a league that I say um, has designed parity, the Patriots have been as close to a, um, a, a dynasty as you'll want to find. And it really starts at the top there with Bob Kraft, their owner, who really does think team first and the kind of talent that he brings there. He'd prefer to have players who are thinking about the number of Super Bowls that they can get to as opposed to the number of Pro Bowls. Having said that and giving them their props, with Bill Belichick, who is the master, and Tom Brady, who is sensational, the New York football Jets, not the football Giants, the New York football Jets. Let me tell you something. I'm loving the confidence that they've displayed. Three close games, uh, two of them were back-to-back -back overtime wins, and then a come-from-behind victory in the third game. Mark Sanchez is getting the confidence that he can do it, you know, coming from behind to get it done. Players love playing for Rex Ryan. I know Jim Leonard getting hurt. That's yeah, a big minus one. for them, certainly in terms of that secondary. They're going to have to overcome that. But Rex Ryan, somehow he's got a way of getting these guys to play hard. When I talk to Jason Taylor, when I even talk to the injured Chris Jenkins, he wants to come back because he wants to play for Rex Ryan, who really inspires that kind of a camarader camaraderie that camaraderie that is, and uh, and passion in his players. And that's the mm -hmm. Monday Night Football game. That's the big stage this week. That's going to be a good one. I'm looking forward to seeing that game. Who wins that game, JB? Who? who I, I had to ask you. You're the you expert. I had game, to ask. That game is in Foxborough. No, 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 no. Definitely not an expert. You know, don't go out betting on this one. Rest <laughs> assured. Wow. We we the, definitely want to let you go. I know you've Patriots had. Patriots are tough at home, so you would probably have to give them. Usually that's worth about three points, so you would have to give them the edge because of what their history is. But I think the New York Jets are up to the task. Would not be surprised if I were forced to give a guess in this one. I would think the Jets would probably pull it out. Uh, in yeah. Foxborough. In okay. Foxborough. That's going to be a tall task. All right. Can the Bears go all the way? The chat room wants to know. Yeah, please. I'm, I'm good with these. Can the Bears go all the way? Yes, they can. You know, th there's so many teams. There's not one dominant team in the National Football League. Even mindful of what I just said about the, the Patriots being as close to a dynasty. There's not one dominant squad. If there's a team that many ought to be concerned about, it would be the San Diego Chargers. They Always traditionally start slow, but they finish strong. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They're finishing and they're peaking at the right time. They've got a lot of talent there as well, too. Look out for the San Diego Chargers. But the Bears can get it done. If they can play at the same level that they displayed against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles there in Chicago, with a defense that had an answer for Michael Vick and, 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 and keep Jay Cutler within his comfort zone, yes, they can get it done. As much as Lovey Smith has been uh, talked about and people are thinking, well, he's going to be out of there and he's not getting it done, the players love playing for Lovey Smith as well and he's getting it done. One other team I want to give a little shout-out to, 
Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Not many people really gave them a chance at being or doing anything. And I understand that the quality of their wins haven't been of the highest order, but they're beating the teams that they should. They are a young team. Josh Freeman, their quarterback, nice job. Raheem Morris, their coach, he's a guy, look out for it. He is on his way up, an impressive young coach. Josh Freeman, big guy, too. Yes, he He's is. a big guy. Now, before we let you go, mm -hmm. we, we've racked your brain here on football questions, which mm -hmm. you're, you're, the man, you're the man on. All but good. today, mm -hmm. co-anchoring the CBS Early Show uh -huh. on Saturday, what's it like to switch gears and, you know, be up here in the studio? It keeps you on your toes. Um, <laughs> much like anybody who's been in a given profession, doing a given job for a fair amount of time, there's a comfort level because you're familiar with the routine. That's the case for me in sports. Coming over to the news side of the house, there's a different flow to the show. There are a number of different segments. So it's just getting in, uh, in rhythm, if you will, with that. And also you're talking about a wider range of topics. Mm -hmm. I love being intellectually stimulated by staying on top of current events, much like people who are involved in the political arena stay on top of what's going on in sports. Right long-winded way of saying I thoroughly enjoyed it and the staff both in front of the camera and behind the camera really made it wonderful for me and I'm so very thankful that there was that kind of warm welcome. Well, I know that everybody was thrilled to have you have you here today and we were. I was, I've been talking about it for, for two straight days. JB, you're the man. Thank you so Same much. Stuff. Hey, hey. Have you on a set? Oh, What's hey, hey. Yeah, anytime. Anytime. <laughs> we get another Pittsburgh guy. You already got okay. Cower. You already got Coach Cower and Danny well, out there. We'll that's get three. Good. We'll get three. Yeah, you but go. thank you so much for that's stopping by. Good. And that's all our time here for Backstage Live this week. Of course, we're back, you know, every week. I'll be back probably, you know, in a couple of weeks, and we'll yeah, see. We'll definitely. see you then. So know. thanks for hanging out. <laughs> thanks to JB, and thanks to all our guests. And uh, we'll see you next week. See you next hey, week. Did I mention that Michael Rosen makes me feel comfortable? The ball's <laughs>